Hey there, Mike. You're uh, up, up there in Manchester, right? Uh, here in England. And uh, of course, we know each other through our evolution and archaeology Instagram yes. accounts. So how's it been going? Um, yeah, it's not too bad. It's, it's actually sunny here today, so there's, there's no rain like there usually is. You're an archaeology student and part-time army medic. I think people would be interested to know exactly what an archaeology student does. Is it book work, then digs, then more book work? Uh, what is your average month like? Well, first of all, I'd just like to clarify, it's definitely not dinosaurs, and there's, okay. and there's definitely no aliens involved. But um, there is a lot of book work. I'm a little bit different, because I, I did take a bit of a gap. So it's the summer months now, so ideally I, I should have been on digs, but because I've been away, I've not really had anything organised. So it's all going to be a bit spontaneous and see if we can get out somewhere. Yeah, so there's lots of book learning, but then you also, there are modules where you are in the field digging. In your field, you encounter a lot of creationist arguments, as, as you've already sort of implied. Um, <laughs> arguments about the age of the Earth, about fossils, rate of metric dating, etc. As far as the belief that the Earth is young, 6,000 years or so, what would you say to the creationists from an archaeology point of view to show that the Earth is older than that? Creationism, it, they, they, they rely on this whole 6,000-year-old story that um, comes from Genesis. And then they also rely on their flood. So if the flood was to happen, then we essentially have to rewrite our, our entire history. So we have the pyramids, for example, they're uh, 2000, around 2600 BC. But they would say that around 2300, they had the flood. Now, the, the pyramids weren't destroyed in the flood. There's no water damage. So they, they have to change the narrative and they have to move it. They have to change it all. So... What we find within the pyramids, we, we find fossils within the pyramids themselves, it's, and they're made from limestone. Now, limestone takes hundreds of thousands of years to form, mm. and it also it requires constant slow processes. For it to be sped up, you need large amounts of carbon dioxide. Now, right. if we use large amounts of carbon dioxide, we, it would be, well, unlivable so we wouldn't have these fossilized shells and these fossilized creatures in there also the other problem that they have is we have the geologic column so we know everything's laid down in layers so they would argue that end of the cretaceous we have the mass extinction of the dinosaurs they would say that's where the flood ended and everything then is post-flood um we we know that the the rocks that are made that we uh, that form the pyramids they're from the Eocene, so that's roughly 30 to 50 million years ago. So we have the problem where we've got fossilized shells forming in rock that was actually after the pyramids yeah. once the seas have subsided. So there's, there's lots of mental gymnastics they have to do. They also have to rewrite all the Egyptian dynasties. So they all have, so we can, we can see that we have this written history going back. Yeah, and so you, you've also got the problem that so if we have a population of, say, eight people uh, 4,300 years ago, now they would say the pyramids were built roughly 300 years later. You, we need a workforce of at least 20,000 people to build pyramids, and then that would say that's the men, so you've got another 20,000 women, then you've got the children, and on top of that you need to add the social elite. The eight people you're talking about, those yes. who are on the oh, yes. ark, you supposedly, so ark. Noah, his wife, the children, the wives of the children. Yeah, so. what you generally don't see is massive population booms in times of famine. So you've got to remember that this is the, the earth has literally been salted. You have no modern medicine. If you go back to infant mortality rates, at this time would have been ridiculously high. The amount of women dying in childbirth, because we're talking about something like at least eight children per woman, it would have been ridiculous to get to that level. And also, if you work out the maths, you would have, uh, we would have ended up with um, a population of roughly 7 billion thousands of years ago. So I, I don't yeah. know why the population would expand rapidly in Egypt and it slows down for no reason. Mike, you just walked across the United States yes. from Charleston, South Carolina to San Diego, California, walking yes. through a total of nine states and covering around 2,700 miles in five months. So how did you get this crazy idea and what made you want to do it? 
about 10 years ago, I walked the length of the UK. When I was on, I was on Hadrian's Wall, actually, and I met someone. He was, um, he was just doing a short walk as a bit of preparation for America. And then um, once I left the army, this idea had always been the back of my head and I had, this, I had a lot of time, so I thought, why not do something a bit bigger? So that's why I ended up doing it, essentially. It's just always been the back of my mind. Wow. So you must have had a few encounters of creationists along the way. I mean, you trekked right through the Bible, yeah. Belt, didn't you? Straight, uh, straight through the deep south. So it's, it's a little different because in the UK, you don't, unless you look for them, you don't really find creationists. I, have, I know in America, it's something like, was it 40% of them? Mm. are creationists and then obviously in in the bible though it's it's a lot higher so it you would have like 110 percent in the bible <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah and the dog, dogs as well yeah but, um, you, you'd have awkward situations because people would be they are very nice people they would they would invite me into their homes and you, you'd be sat eating of course yes and then i'd be sat talking and then it's if you mention evolution they it kind of triggers something and so originally, I'd, I'd try and point out, you know, it's not necessarily a conflict with Christianity, and it was uh, the Big Bang itself was proposed by a Catholic priest himself. But it, it, it did get to the point where, because my, my Instagram account, I post a lot of history and evolution, um, I, would, I would stop adding people onto Instagram, and I'd have to invite them onto Facebook instead, just because I, I was aware that this just kept happening, and you know, I keep getting messages, and people saying they'll, they'll pray for me. and I mean, do you just have to mention the word archaeology, or does it specifically have to be evolution? or uh, it, it tends to be. So archaeology, so ev evolution does seem to be the trigger word, especially when you're, you're talking about human evolution, um, because they, they can somehow get around that animals have changed, but if, if humans themselves, uh, that, that's a no-no for them. But archaeology-wise, you, um, you do tend to find a lot of people that they collect arrowheads, in the uh, in the US, so I, I I did meet one guy once, and he, he took me and he showed me where to find them. So I, I've got a few in my collection now, going back to about eight thousand years. So that was wow, quite that's quite an interest of yours, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, uh, people would show me. They'd take me to like petroglyphs and pictographs, you know, paintings and carvings on walls. So 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 history they tend to be fine with, but it, it's evolution is the no no. They, you know, my grandparents weren't hairy, <laughs> smelly apes. Yeah, there's, I'm, yeah. I'm not descended from a monkey. Yeah. I mean, did you get into a, I mean, I know you said people invited you into your homes. You didn't get into that conversation over the uh, the, the, the dinner table, did you? It, it would, things would go quiet. There was, they, it was as if they didn't want to argue with, with their guests who in their home, you know, they were, this whole hospitality thing. So they'd, they'd be nice to you. But then it would be later on, you'd, I would get messages like, oh, I'll, we'll pray for you and hopefully maybe you can start posting some biblical history because there's lots of history within the Bible. Um, <laughs> yes, after yeah. a fashion, maybe. <laughs> yeah, there, 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 are, there are some things, yeah. Um, the, the, the arguments never tended to happen in person. They would always be smiling and nice and I would always get afterwards, I would always get sort of messages and it would escalate. And they get very angry and then ask you to like, they'll just leave the country then if you don't like America. And well, did they specifically like ask for your Instagram and email? And then, well, <laughs> well no, what well, originally it's like, oh, they're like, can we follow you across America? And I'll put them on Instagram. So just follow my journey. And then they'll see the history stuff and then that would, um, well, trigger them. So that's why I started putting them on Facebook instead, just so there was no history and evolution things on there. I know you say you're an archaeology student, so you're learning all the time. So it must yeah. have been in that trek, you must have discovered things which have added to your knowledge and a few surprises in terms of uh, archaeology. Um, yeah, well, it's, it, it's very different. I didn't really know much about American archaeology. And you do get lots of the, well, the amateur archaeologists and they, they go out and there's, this big, there's a massive culture within collecting the arrowheads. Some people are just like completely obsessed with it. I've been in homes where they'll take you into one of their rooms and it's just lined with hundreds of arrowheads. So I, I did get to learn a lot about that. Um, lots, of, lots about Native American culture as well. Mm. When people would take me around, especially when you get further, when you get out west um, into the desert, into Arizona and New Mexico, and people would show me these places where to go. Mike, in your experience, what is the most common argument coming from creationists <laughs> regarding evolution and how do you address it? There's... The, 
common one that I seem to get at the moment, and I've, I've noticed that people started posting it on in, on your Evolution Suit page. Um, they like to use Evolution is a religion. It's your, I think it comes from, is it Kent Hoving? And he says he has his scientism and evolutionism. Yeah. But the problem with science, it's, science isn't trying to prove anything right. It's not trying to prove anything wrong. It's, it's just, we're following the facts. And all the dis different disciplines over centuries have led us to this conclusion that the Earth is billions of years old and that evolution happened. Um, on the other hand, they're arguing from, they've already made their presupposition. They've, they've read the Bible. They, they believe that they're 6,000 years old, um, six-day creation. And now that they're trying to make all the evidence fit. Now, that's, that's not science. That's, that is their religion. That's fine for them to believe that, but they have to understand that they're not arguing from a scientific point of view. We, I propose that we should do, is it you know, the Joseph Smith test? So if we were to take... Oh, yes, yes. If we from take, the Mor like, Mormons, yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if we get rid of all the science textbooks, so we, we hide them all and we bury them all away. And we do the same thing with Bibles. And we bury them away. If we were to come back in thousands of years' time, we would have rediscovered this knowledge. We would be aware that the Earth is 4.5 billion years old, that we are evolved creatures, etc. With Without Genesis, though, this this whole concept that the Earth is only 6,000 years old just wouldn't exist. So I'm willing to change my mind, are, are you? That's what I'd say to them. Yeah. Well, it, it'd be interesting to see how they, if that actually was able to <laughs> actually occur, um, how it would play out. Um, okay, Mike, I'm sure there are some people who are interested in the archaeology, not necessarily young people, but uh, people who just find it fascinating, and they want to perhaps go the same route you have and become a student to study it. Uh, what advice would you give people who have an interest in this subject? Um, well, I'd, I wouldn't give them the advice that I was given. See, I, I was told that, you know, so I'm, I'm quite a bit older because I spent a few years within the army. So I remember being told that, you know, once you've hit a certain age, don't even bother, you know, because you're going to spend years studying, you're going to spend all your money on your education, and then you're going to find it hard to find a job. So it's, if, if you want to do something, there's no point in chasing the money. So that's, I could have had a comfortable life, but I've, I've just chased your happiness. You don't even have to do it as an occupation. It could be a hobby. Like I mentioned earlier, you have the Arrowhead Hunters throughout America, and, you know, they, they go out on the weekends, and that's their passion. So if, if you want to, then there are plenty of amateur archaeology societies. You can just, just Google it. There's even metal detectoring if you want to, just not necessarily raiding any tombs or cairns or anything. But yeah, there's, there, there are lots of ways, and Google is your friend on this. And it's also a friend to creationists if they can just, if they want to learn the basic facts. Absolutely. Okay. Mike Fitzmorris, thank you very much indeed. And for those who want to follow your work, they can find you on Instagram, and it's under Archaeology Gains. Isn't that right? So Archaeology yeah. underscore Gains, G-A-I-N-S. Uh, I'll put that link in the description below, and hopefully we'll have another chat about archaeology and evolution in the near future. Yes, thank you.